This is what I was talking about with the alignment stuff from last week. Okay, before we got to this stage right here, the 70 Camaro was underneath the lift. The 66 Falcon was over there because we were shooting video on doing a headliner in a 66 Falcon for Manic Mechanic. It's all so much fun. So now we're gonna get the 67 back in here. And the reason I didn't have the 67 and just leave it on the lift is because we have daily driver cars around here that need to have things done to them and we need to lift for that. Well, don't need it, but we certainly want it. Punch that up on the back of the car. How many chops we got? Just the two? Jackson, grab blue. Ready to heave ho? Yep. Oh man. That's a little bit easier. <laughs> mugga mugga. A lot easier. Whee! That was pretty close for my booty. Ooh. That's good right about there. All right, chalk it up, because it will now roll. And there's no transmission stuff in it. Go ahead and shut the door. And that's why it's a lot easier to make sure you got an alignment on this thing. If you want to see what we did, go check it out. Uh, last week's video information for that is below me here. Also in the description below with a direct link. There you go. Now we're going to figure out what we're going to do this week. All right, one of the problems that this car has and has had since we got it in here is the windows. The windows on this car will roll down, but they won't roll up. Like it stops there and if I pull on the glass, it'll roll up, but it's not catching on the glass up here, it's actually catching, I think, somewhere inside the mechanisms. Because I can hold the glass, but it won't always roll up, and that's pretty darn loose. So what I want to work on today is to try to get this glass where it'll go up and down. Uh, we may have to hold off and add parts to it and come back next week and fix that, but for right now, my main goal is to find out why this glass is not moving like it should. Don't think it's in the division bar. I actually think it's somewhere down inside the mechanism here. Uh, and there's some boy howdy going on on this thing. Let me, let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and start taking off stuff. This is... This is... I'm wondering if this one's going to be like the last one I pulled off. That's not supposed to do that, as a guy on Instagram says. This is actually the incorrect screw for this. This should be a machine screw inside of here, not a self-tapper. If you're using self-tappers, not as problematic on the window crank as it is on the door handle, which, conveniently, they also used a self-tapper on the door handle. This will strip out much quicker than a machine screw will. Uh, and it's not even all that deep in there. It's fairly shallow. Got to get that off. Now, on the armrest, you're either going to have Phillips head screws in the two positions here and here, or you'll have a self-tapping bolt that's a 3 8 68 was more toward the bolts on these cars, but I've seen it in both directions. I've seen both. So later in 69 and 70, they pretty much all went to uh, the self-tapping bolt. This screwdriver is just a little bit small for this, but it'll do the job. Well, B, they actually have the correct fastener in there. <laughs> Miracle of miracles. That pops off like that. Um, probably should replace these with some new ones because of the bend that they have in them. Uh, these, <laughs> this is not correct to have these kind of screws in here. That one was in there. I'm going to pull this door panel off and see what we got. <laughs> we got glue. And the water shield.
now I see why they may have done what they done, they've done. All right, on a 67, 68 Mustang, there should be clips on the back side of this to hold this in place. All right, so you can see where there's a slot here, kind of a, a oblong here and here. There's corresponding snap points inside of the door panel for this to sit with the stock clips. Now what I'm showing you right now, these are the clips that you should be using in here, <clears throat> not what our friends who put this car together did. I'm not even going to go into how I feel about this car sometimes. I like this car. I don't like what was done to it. It's kind of like an abused puppy, you know what I mean? It just, it just makes you mad every time you think about it. So now I've got to pull the fur off. <laughs> This is actually not a bad material that they've done in here, but what it does is it kind of also causes you a problem from the aspect of it makes the door panel sit out really fat and it won't clip in. And that's probably why they ended up just putting the screws in there. We won't be going back in with this. We will probably put something on the back side of the glass to see what we got. Goodbye. Furry. Nice Mustang, soft. Okay, not gonna be a lot that we can show you here on this door, uh, but what we're gonna start doing is looking at things. When you're working on stuff like this, you're gonna wanna look for areas that are not greased well for one thing. Um, that's kind of strange without the door panel in start to roll up better except when it gets right there that's been our major stopping point on this this glass doesn't necessarily roll all the way up we usually will have about a quarter of an inch at the top I think one of the first things I want to do is to just get some lubrication on the door initially to see if that will help all the tracks look like they're in play everything looks like it's where it's supposed to be it's just incredibly hard to turn some of that could have been coming from the fact that they had this fuzzy stuff, the, um, the sound insulation behind the door panel. That could be causing an issue because there is a, a standard depth for this thing. When you put that sound deadener in there, it's going to cause a drag on the back of the window crank. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab some spray lubricant and see what happens when we just lubricate this door on the inside. All right, I've got some old penetrating lubricant. I don't even think this company that did this stuff is still in business. So I'm not going to talk about what the can is, um, but I'm going to put some lubricant here first. This thing is as dry as your granddaddy's scalp. There is, <laughs> there is zero lubrication that I can see anywhere inside the workings of this door. That may be 90% of our problem. So we're going to go in here and kind of put a squirtsy squirts here. And this stuff's going to... If it's a penetrating lubricant, it will probably soak down into the um, mechanism a little bit. I'm going to hit three sides. What you want to do is to take the window and crank it up and down some and see if that makes a difference. I think we are getting some problem on the division bar, but that right there has made some difference in this already. And like I said, there is zero lubrication in this door. Now what I'm gonna do is back up in here, there is a roller at this location here. Uh, you really can't see it from this. We would have to cut this door apart and I'm pretty sure Kylie wouldn't want us to do that to his car. And there's another one that's further back down in here, but the track for it ends right here and the track for the front section ends right about here. And as I said before, there is zero lubrication on these tracks. This is crazy. I, I don't know why anybody wouldn't lubricate it. Ford lubricated them from the factory. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to take my spray lubricant and I'm gonna stick it down inside the tracks here, run into the roller and spray a bunch of this stuff in here to see what we can get. This end may be a little more problematic, Nope, I can hit the roller here too. <laughs> the wonders of lubrication. I 
I honestly thought we were going to have roller problems on this window. And it really boils down to the fact that nobody lubricated anything. Now there's one more lubrication point here and there's one up in the front down low here. And so I'm going to throw some lube on those. It's kind of hard to get to this one. You can take your little wand thing and stick it down in there. And I'm going to roll it down a little bit. This one does not have a ton of movement on it, but it does move. <laughs> Cam, Cam's sitting across the room from me, he's like... <laughs> it's working, it's working. All right, now I'm gonna get this one in the front. I'm gonna take and push this in until I hit the roller. Gotta give it that hock tour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sad thing is, is about 60%, well, probably about 40% of our viewers will know what that means. And the rest of them that don't, you're probably better off. Cam's over here making color commentary off camera now. It's like the old men and the, and the thing on the Muppets that up in the balcony. I cannot believe that nobody lubricated this thing. Wait a minute, I've been working on this car how long and I keep saying that like I don't... Yeah, <laughs> nothing should surprise you at this point. <laughs> and I haven't even done the start wheel yet. All right, now, those are moving a lot better. We're in good shape on that and I still can't believe that's all it is. I really honestly thought we were gonna have to do a roller replacement on this and possibly cut a door open just so that we could show you how this, this, this stuff works. Um, so now the last thing on the door on this car is to do the uh, rotator inside of here because I believe if nothing else has been greased, that probably hasn't been greased since 1966 or maybe early 67. So we're going to take the uh, can of lubricant. I'm going to throw some on the star wheel in here. Star wheel, um, what I'm showing you now is basically the mechanism for the, um, the windows on this. This is one that you can get from National Parts Depot. If your car is completely wrecked, they do have a replacement for these for the 60, I believe 65 all the way up to 70 now. Don't quote me on that. Go look in the catalog and make sure. Um, but the star wheel also needs to get some lubrication put on it as well. And honestly, nobody's going to be in here. I'm trying to get this up into the mechanism a little bit. That's all it takes, folks. Um, what we're going to probably do Next week is we'll come back in and put a fresh set of door panels on here and some armrests along with a couple of other things trying to clean up this interior. Um, if you guys want to see it, we're going to be putting a carpet set in this. Just let us know if you want to see the carpet set going in. That's coming up pretty quick too because we're trying to get this car put back together for the owner. That is for some reason deeply satisfying. All right, so now the windows roll down, so we're through with that one little task. That was something on the tick list for me to work on. The brewer quarter windows need to be done as well, but we really can't show you that. The quarter windows, these windows as well, use the rollers I'm showing you right now, and probably what's happened back here is those rollers have popped off, most likely because nobody greased them. So we're going to go in and put those rollers back on and then get that rear window working as well. But I gotta take the quarter panels out and I got to take the seats and everything out to put the carpet in, which we're going to be doing uh, on down the road in a future episode. But that's it. Just that simple. Now, the next week, we're coming back with uh, putting everything back in here. We're going to put the 
uh, door panels back in. I'm going to talk about a couple things to do with that. And then we're also going to be doing the lower hinge on this car with a newer hinge, the one that was used on the 68, because it's, it's just 